All right, guys, it's time for a video. Excuse me. It's time for a video many of you have requested, and that is an update about our Garmin 770 RV GPS. How it's doing in the real world. We're currently traveling in the Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida area. This is sort of like the nav station we have set up here. We've got our Garmin GPS, we've got uh, my phone on a mount, and we also have our little built-in entertainment center here that has a rear camera looking back at the trailer, specifically at the hitch area. But in this video, I want to talk about the Garmin. We really like traveling with a dedicated RV GPS because it has certain features that are sort of optimized for RV travel. You know, with this GPS, you can plug in your specific rig, whether you have a motorhome, a fifth wheel, a travel trailer, or what have you. It will customize your route based upon your rig length and height. So, especially for you guys who are traveling around in the Northeast where there are a lot of low bridges and so forth, it can be an important safety tool. I also like that it frees up a phone, so it leaves your phone to be a phone, and it gives you a nice GPS that's kind of optimized for RV travel. Again, there's the not only the, the safety standpoint, of having a GPS that knows what kind of rig you're maneuvering, but it, there are also RV specific features like campgrounds and where to buy propane and, and so forth. So at this point, we have been using this Garmin 770 GPS for about a year, and I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of some things I like about it and some things that maybe I don't like about it. I like the size of the display. It's got a really large display that's you know pretty much be larger than any phone that you could be using it's a nice big easy to read display and of course it has a touch screen and something about the display when you are nearing a crucial intersection or when you have to like change highways or whatever it will actually show you a look at the street signs so you will see a little preview of what the signage should look like and that can really help you when you're having to make you know, a change in highways with your RV rig. So I really like that. I like the display and I like the fact that it includes the signage. It's pretty incredible at times. I have mixed feelings about the voice command option. This thing is always listening and that's sort of a blessing and a curse. View map, if you ever say the words voice command, it pops up this little display. Voice command, find place, Walmart Supercenter. One, navigate. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a really nice and powerful feature. View map, but Sometimes it gets confused. Sometimes it thinks you said voice command when you didn't say voice command. <laughs> View map. And the other really weird thing about this is like all these devices these days, it's always listening. Truthfully, it's probably no different from a cell phone or a tablet or any other so-called smart device that you might be carrying around with you. They're always listening. Ostensibly, they're listening for voice commands, but who knows what else they're listening for. So that kind of bothers me a little bit. I like the fact it shows you on the screen whenever there's a speed limit change. They're really helpful little pop-up graphics that will pop across the top of the screen that can definitely be very helpful when you're maneuvering around town. Now one of the question marks about this GPS has concerned its actual navigation. And truthfully, we've had a few weird situations with the GPS when it has told us to do something <laughs> that simply was impossible to do in the real world. I mean, like there was a time I remember it told us to turn left 
at an intersection and there was a big concrete divider in the middle of the road and had we just blindly followed the instructions we would have found ourselves in a real mess so i do think there are some quirks to the navigation i've heard that complaint from other people uh, I certainly think it's true of all GPS's that at times you're gonna have to do a real-world reality check and at times you're gonna have to ignore the GPS's recommendation. Something that I'm a little disappointed in with the GPS are the customization options. You've really only got a couple of different voices to choose from. In one and three quarter miles, turn right. And it used to be, it seems, that Garmin offered a lot of different options for just different fun voices for your GPS, and they don't seem to really do that anymore. You can't really customize your vehicle too much either. Now here you can see what I'm talking about with the road sign. It gives you an idea of what to look for on the signage. And I think that's, that's really, really helpful because a lot of times you're towing an RV rig, you've got to be really careful with lane changes, and you've got a lot of additional stress that's associated with towing, you know, a 50 foot long rig, basically, Keep that left. being able to see what the sign is actually gonna look like is a really powerful feature. Now, check this out up on the road so we can see it. And it's got these really helpful arrows on the map that will steer you in the right direction. So overall, I think the navigation is excellent, but with that one little asterisk or caveat that you always have to do that real world check. I really like the way they do firmware and map updates. The map updates are always included. They don't nickel and dime you on that sort of thing. And if you have any kind of Wi-Fi connection, you can update your GPS uh, just over Wi-Fi signal. So you don't have to plug it in to a computer or anything to update your maps. So I really like that. I know that some of you guys are really like heavy, hardcore GPS users, and you plan out your itineraries long in advance. And I'm not typically that heavy of a GPS user. I just get in, I tell it where I want to go, and I just hope it gets me there <laughs> in, a, in a reasonably reliable and safe fashion. And I would say, you know, overall, we've been really pleased with this. So, you know, as far as my recommendation, I haven't seen any RV GPS that does any better than this. So overall, I would, I would recommend this. I know some guys look at the, the Garmin 660, which is sort of the predecessor model to this one. And I haven't really tried the 660. I've heard good things about it. I think this GPS got some poor reviews, like right out of the gate, because Garmin may have launched it maybe without having all of their ducks in a row. <laughs> And I think in the months since, they've released several different firmware updates. And at this point, it should be a pretty much a mature unit. It's been on the market for about a year. You know, uh, it's certainly the best standalone GPS that I've tried, and I haven't tried them all, but uh, we're pretty happy with ours. So that's a real world update, a look at the Garmin 770, the RV GPS unit. Uh, of course, if you're interested in this unit, we'll put a link in the description for this video where you can uh, read more reviews of it, maybe pick one of, of your own. And uh, that's about it. We're on to our next destination. Hopefully the Garmin will get us there. Until next time, I'm Sean. This is Long Long Honeymoon, where we say lo, lo, ho. Hey guys, if you like our videos, a great way to say thank you is to shop using our store on Amazon. You can find it at amazon.com slash shop slash long, long honeymoon. You can bookmark this address and start your Amazon shopping there every time. Everything you need for your next RV adventure awaits in our store. But you don't have to just buy camping gear. You can use our store to buy anything that Amazon sells.
sales. When you go to our store, you begin a unique shopping session. For the next 24 hours, all the items that you add to your Amazon shopping cart will be credited back to Long Long Honeymoon. When you make a purchase using our store, we receive a small commission. We're reinvesting those commissions into the production of our show. All purchases made in the Amazon store are completely private, so we have no idea who is buying what. So if you're looking to buy a new banana slicer, you now know where to go. Or a banana hammock. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> hey guys.